Okay. Was it over the weekend or was it on Friday? Business mogul Narendra Raval raised something very <coughs> interesting that kicked off a conversation on the presidential term limits. This is what he had to say. I wish that we have this president for at least for 25 years. He, no, Mali Angidi ko meka mingi sana. So if we have this Ichi Tabatlisa. Willis, let's set us off on this. Is this a conversation that we should be having? And there's a lot of jostling right now in 2027. You have your own political arithmetic that you think is the winning formula. Yes. Is this a conversation we should have right I, now? I think uh, the conversation that we should be having right now is whether Kenyans should uh, continue with William Ruto until 2027. Not whether we should add him 25 more years as promoted by, you know, Narendra. by the, the Narendra. Because I say this because Kuru elucidated to you there are seven challenges of the country, yeah. the state of the nation today. Mm -hmm. And it's a problem every day. You wake up every morning, it's new problems, mm -hmm. failures of government. Kenyans are poorer today than they were yesterday. And they are guaranteed they'll be poorer tomorrow than they are today. So your quality of life keeps depreciating every single day. Only fat cats like Narendra, who seems to be in, uh, providing services to government, are having a field day. And that is why he can stand up and speak the way he's speaking, that, look here, this should go on for 25 years, irrespective of our constitution. But it is right, he's entitled to his opinion, but that is not where the mind of Kenyans are. What Kenyans should be focused on <laughs> is for how long are we going to continue with this pain of Kenya Kwanzaa? And can we have a conversation <clears throat> about the people's agenda? What can Kenya Kwanzaa and the other parliamentary parties do to improve the quality of life that Kenyans are living. That should be the primary concern today as we speak. And even as in our political party, Safina party, as led by Jimmy Wanjigi, our primary focus is purely on the economic agenda, the people's agenda. And we've identified why Kenya Kwanzaa is failing and what is our promise to the people. It's about a focus of the economy from demand side economics to supply side economics. And at the right time, we'll elucidate this further to Kenyans. Our problem is not even about revenue. Our problem is expenditure as a country. If you are spending 70%, now almost 80% of your revenue on debt finance, you are spending 30% on uh, salaries, you are spending 35 shillings on operations, you are spending 15% to counties, you are falling behind every day. And yet, you're also running a large government that is not frugal. <coughs> You're obscene in your spending. Yeah. So our problem is a spending problem, not a revenue problem. But Kenya Kwanzaa thinks our problems are revenue problem, and every day, and I assure you, the finance bill is coming in a few months' time. You are going to see more and more taxes being increased, and you're going to see more levies and charges by government agents and departments being increased. Okay. And that will not be a solution to our problem. It will be more and more pain. The cow is dry, there is no more milk yeah. that you are going to make, get out of this cow however much you try to milk it. Okay. Ekuru, even as we have this conversation, there's still a lot of political arithmetic going on in 2027. But what, where should our priority be right now? You know, like... As you re as respond to what Narendra yeah, mentioned. So, yes, so. <laughs> we allow everyone to just give their views, regardless of yeah. what the views are. Yeah. What are uh, your uh, Trevor. Yes. I want to change the, the narrative and look at the reason why <clears throat> we have presidential term limits. History tells us that, uh, and looking at our constitution, we have borrowed our presidential system from the U.S., the American constitution, which was, which was enacted way back in 1787. And before 1940, no American president <coughs> served more than two terms. Mm -hmm. And it was not by constitution, it was just by practice. Mm -hmm. uh, George Washington, Jefferson felt that after eight years, I've done point. enough, I'm fatigued, I've got ill health, and so it's time to go. And then came the war, the Second World War, and Franklin Roosevelt became president in 1940. And he went on to serve for four terms. Unfortunately, in his fourth term, he only <coughs> served in 54 days. But then the Americans started asking and questioning, how can we have somebody serve for so long? And that is when the Americans went for what they call the 22nd Amendment in 1947 and enacted a law to limit the term of the presidency. And why 
do they do this? The first reason, <coughs> avoid what we call a monarchy system. Mm -hmm. There has to be a difference between a president and a monarch. Mm -hmm. monarch monarchs can be perpetual. Presidents must have limits. Why? To ensure that they tame what they call obsolete power. Tame corruption. And in reality, most presidents, after serving eight years, are already very fatigued. Mm -hmm. And if they've not achieved what they were supposed to achieve in eight years, then it is, it is not possible that they can achieve it Even if you want them more time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, they say, <clears throat> if you want to measure a good thing, you measure the first. They say that the first impression is the lasting impression. Yeah. So if you want to measure a good thing, you measure the first year. So you've done, for, you've done it eight years, and you can't do it. You're not guaranteed that you can do it any much better after that. <coughs> but this conversation, even in the US, it is still alive. In fact, before he left office, Trump himself said that he would like to change the Constitution and serve for more than 14 years. He said that. Before that, uh, at, at his exit, Bill Clinton felt that he was still very young. He would have served for more years. 1989, Reagan also said, oh, I think this term limit is something that should not be entertained in our constitution. But you, would, you promise to look at it. And so having this convention is right, yes, because it happens everywhere, including the US where we have borrowed our, our constitution from. <coughs> but then looking that's, at that's Kenya, not, that's not looking, true. looking at Kenya, let, let him finish. Let looking him finish. at Kenya, yeah. and looking at 20 months into the presidency of William Ruto and the Kenya Kwanzaa administration, and uh, you try and find what, what tangible achievements, uh, and you don't, you don't seem to, f to see them. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, at least for me, and Willis has, has given a very bad prediction that tomorrow's life will be worse than today. Yeah. And that is a feeling among Kenyans. And so no one wants to attend this conversation because we think it is misplaced. Mm -hmm. It is coming at the wrong time. Yeah. And that if there was ever an assessment about our president, it is after he has served his five years, mm. then probably you would say, okay, let's give him another five years, if he deserves it. Okay. But then going on national radio and saying 25 years and you don't even vote in Kenya, that guy doesn't vote in Kenya. Okay. He's, he's an he alien. Has <laughs> he's, a, he's a foreigner. Mm. <laughs> I'm, I can assure you during election, he, he goes to India. That I can assure you. They all do that anyway. Or Canada. Or, or Canada. Or Australia. I think he was uh, playing to the gallery. Okay. And I must disclose that I know him. Yeah. But then uh, his character is not the, that type. He's normally a very quiet person, cool, collected, and very focused. But saying that on national TV, I think it was, I think he was excited the in, the, in, the, in the heat of West Pocot. Okay. And uh, looking at the, <laughs> the regalia that uh, the entertainers were wearing, I yeah. got excited and thought he would rather, rather be there for 25 years. <laughs> okay. Joe, what are your thoughts on this? Because he's not the only one who said it. That's why I'm trying to move this conversation from Narendra himself. It's just a conversation that has been there because Fafi, member of parliament, is actually the one who started it some time back. How many years did Fafi, member of parliament, suggest? <laughs> Five years, an extension. He just said an extension, about seven years, actually. He was suggesting an, a, a review of the constitution. Can I just say something before maybe Mwesh staff. comes in? Yeah. You see, I don't know whether, Trevor, you might remember when we did uh, the Punguza Mizigo Constitutional Amendment Bill. Eh? <clears throat> Our proposal was that we reduce the two term limits to one term of seven, seven years. Seven years, yes. And that seven years, because we did an analysis, we, we figured out that the first term, because of this two, year, uh, two term limit, eh? the first term, the, the first two years, the president normally plays politics, yeah. either of coalition, getting people here and there, you know, to work together with him. That's why now we can say yeah. the president controls parliament because he has managed to compromise even the, the, the opposition, except a few, a few individuals like Manduku here. Yeah. <laughs> and, <laughs> so those two years, yeah. now, even right now, as you can see the jostling. And then, of course, now, even before going to work, really, they already start talking about the next Election. election. Yeah. So the president, I think ideally only in the two term limits that we have now only works for one year because the last two years is campaign period. Although this one has already started campaigning, he, he, he has not stopped. So, and, and, and of course, you also, it, we also related the two term limits to actually, uh, you know, uh, theft of public money. It's the last two years when we lose a lot of money because it is money meant for re-election. Yeah. And, and, and therefore, for me, the two term, the extension is based on what? 
Mm. This is a question that maybe Mwishima Nyutu can, can try and help us answer uh, because he's on the other side. <clears throat> when this conversation is being undertaken, <coughs> what really informs it? Yeah. Are there like some major achievements that we can say, you know, we don't want to lose this present? Mm. I know, for example, in Rwanda, uh, when these people themselves say, no, no, we, we still want Kagame because, you know, we still feel we have not recovered from the 1994 genocide, yeah. but we've also seen the, where he has taken the country in terms of certain policy decisions and all, and they feel there is, there is fear that if somebody else comes, he might, might not continue. Yeah. But the, the other question, uh, Trevor, and Moesh and you can, can talk about this, you know, as African people, we have also departed so much from our own <coughs> ways of governance. Yeah. In traditional Africa, I know, I'm not probably the wisest of people to speak about this, but I know there was something called succession planning where even Wazes, once they reach of a certain age, they will allow the young, the yeah. energetic, to take over and look after the community. Why is it that we cannot transplant that value of governance from our own existential locations as traditional people mm. to now politics? Okay. You know? Yeah. Succession plan. So why can the president say, I am grooming so-and-so yeah. to succeed me because he believes in the same ideologies as me? And this thing of trying to, I, I have to stay for long, there's no magic about it. We've seen examples of Akina Mugabe, of a staying, look at how they ended up. <clears throat> You've seen our neighbor Museveni, now what he's doing. He's becoming, the state is almost becoming his personal chattel, property. He puts his daughter in central bank, his son in charge of the army, his wife, a minister, Suji, I think education, or what, have even lost count. So the, the state is likely to become a, a, a chattel, yeah. a private property. And that's why the, term, the, the limits, presidential limits, yeah. are very key. Okay, new to uh, thank you, uh, Trevor. I think the first thing that I want to say is that the president himself has not uh, expressed <laughs> any interest <laughs> or desire. But he has not, de but he has not denied. <laughs> Please give me my time. Yes, yes. Uh, I'm a very disciplined person. Yes. Even when you give me my opportunity true, true. and that guy wants to uh, drop in a word, I do. So I think I would request them to also give me my time. Okay, yes. okay. The president has not indicated in any way whatsoever that he is interested in doing a third term should he win a second term. And so when the Fafi member of parliament uh, raised that issue, I think it was his own opinion, and I think the president responded at that time, and he said that his major occupation as of now yeah. was to see that the quality of life of Kenyans improved to serve Kenyans in this term that he has been given. And so I think uh, uh, let us not draw the president into this particular uh, <laughs> debate because he has not expressed any interest in that. Yeah. And, uh, and uh, these are people speaking independently. <clears throat> uh, Trevor, um, there is a reason why Section 2A was repealed. Uh, 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 and that is what uh, gave, in to, gave in to, I think, uh, multipartism. Uh, multi mm -hmm. And uh, that is when we introduced now term limits of two terms. There were reasons. And I don't think that on our side of Kenya Kwanzaa that we have this plan of changing the presidential term limits. So these are people who should be taken as people who are expressing their opinions and uh, op an opinion that does not have su the support of uh, Kenya Kwanzaa. However, uh, uh, I think for me that is not even a debate that would worry me because the president will still have to face the electorate anyway, even if there are not going to be term limits. Yeah. So the electorate still have the democratic right and power uh, to decide whether a president will continue <coughs> in office or not. So I think that is not something that would uh, overly, uh, you know, uh, worry me because uh, at the end of the day, uh, the electorate still have the power of the vote uh, to discontinue a president if they feel that uh, the president is not serving their interests. Mm. Um, why again people should not worry about such sentiments by these people? It's not the first time this thing is being said. You remember Atuoli once said that Uhuru was too young. Uh, to right. retire. Yes. And everybody thought that uh, <laughs> uh, the former president had plans to extend his, uh, his, uh, his uh, stay in office. Yeah. But when the results were announced, yeah. and His Excellency, uh, the president uh, now, William Ruto, was announced as winner, President Uhuru 
handed in over the instruments of power. Yeah. So, I mean, uh, but at that time, <coughs> there are many people who thought that uh, Atuli was speaking uh, yeah. was a mouthpiece of the president. Yeah. I think it's the same thing that is happening about this and the red guy. Yeah. Uh, he's another Atuli for me. <laughs> I, I don't think that, uh, that, they, that they, he's speaking for the president. Yeah. And uh, although, although um, because uh, Dr. Ikuru said that uh, he's the chief and the main supplier of steel to the building, um, uh, 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 um, affordable, the, housing. affordable housing. If it were in Parliament, uh, then uh, we would have required him through the Speaker to table evidence uh, <laughs> to that effect. Because uh, I, I think uh, it's just a matter of hearsay. Probably you can ask him when he comes here next time <laughs> to bring evidence that he knows that this guy is uh, the only supplier. Okay. But I think this guy, like I've said, is another tool. But just allow me to say a few things. Yeah. Because uh, 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 <clears throat> Dr. Uh, our court has asked, what has President Ruto done? I can mention a few things quickly. Dr. Ruto has employed 56,000 teachers in a record one year. Something that has not been done before. What ethnic? Uh, <laughs> uh, something that has not been done before, Trevor. Because we must give credit where Wait. it is due. Yes. Dr. Ruto, when he came into office, uh, Trevor, he found a very restless um, uh, uh, community of parents uh, about CBC. Because he's a responsive president, what he did very fast was to appoint what we call the, the Presidential Working Party on Educational Reforms, yeah. which uh, sorted, settled the issue of uh, where junior school was going to be domiciled. Because every other parent, about 95%, actually didn't want uh, uh, a junior secondary to be domiciled in, uh, in, in secondary schools. Yeah. That is an achievement that uh, His Excellency the President achieved within the very first month of his, uh, of his rule. And we must give uh, uh, credit where it is due. The Hustlers Fund has been <laughs> implemented, and people are borrowing. And this is true. Yeah. People are borrowing. They may not be borrowing millions, yeah. but they are borrowing, and this is something that is transforming their lives, especially Hustlers. And this is something that Dr. Ruto has done. Yeah. So you cannot ask what has uh, Dr. Ruto done in the one and a half or so years that he's been in office. Then. This, uh, this, this, this affordable housing, yeah. uh, Trevor, if you go, there are so many young men <coughs> on site. Okay. You know, engineers, masons, all people that are in, all that uh, come into building are there. So there are many things that okay. uh, His Excellency the President has achieved all over right. the last one and a half years. Okay. So you cannot ask what has he done. Let me just say this. Let me just say this. Let me just say this. Yes. <laughs> the most important thing that we should ask, Senator, is very simple. Yeah. To give us the sum total yes. of William Ruto in the last two years, mm -hmm. has the lives of Kenyans improved or retrogressed? Yes. Are more Kenyans employed or unemployed? Pure and simple. Is, food okay. on the table? Is there food on the table or more people are hungry? And the net result in any, yeah. any, any conversation is that he has failed. Kenyans are poorer today okay. than they were yesterday, okay. despite okay. his well, intervention. Uh, what he's telling us, what, we, what, he's yeah. telling us yeah. what he's telling us <laughs> yes. are interventions <laughs> that he has sought to do. And we are saying those interventions in terms of their outcomes yeah. have failed. Mm. More, the healthcare system in this country has collapsed. Mm. That's the most important crisis thing. Crisis all okay. over. There's a health crisis. All right. The food security has collapsed. His own hallowed project of fertilizer has failed. You are talking about school system. You determine school at the point of, of, of max. In the last marks when they were released, it was an outcry. Marks were being awarded like picky picky ponky. <laughs> you didn't know what you were going to get. <laughs> JSS transition from primary to JSS has never been addressed until today. You have JSS schools where you have one teacher qualified attending to almost 200 students. Mm -hmm. Now primary school teachers who are not trained on JSS are the ones going there to offer a first aid to the students. And that is telling us you've employed more teachers. Everything that this man has touched, let's speak the truth. He has tried, but his best is an e for effort for himself and his cabinet. Okay, a good one. Last minute. Uh, those, no, okay, I yeah. just zero in on one thing. Yes, yeah. you have employed teachers. Yeah. 
The truth for the matter out there is that their, their salaries are even delayed. They are paid 18,000. In yeah, fact, yeah. they are only paid yeah. 18,000 Kenya shillings. So, they are not employed teachers. Yeah. They are employed interns Inter earning 18,000 yeah. Kenya shillings. So, so you must speak the truth that he has not employed 56,000 teachers. Okay. He has given internship opportunity to 56,000 people, okay. paying them 18,000 Kenya right, shillings. Minute, so, so I think Mwesh, Mwesh is uh, mi <coughs> misunderstanding one point here. Yeah. That he is taking us back to the manifesto of of UDA of Kenya Kenya Kwanza. Yeah. We'll do this, we'll do this, we'll do that. That's fine. Everybody has a plan. Yeah. I think the fundamental question Mwesh you have not answered here is what really is the outcome of those plans? Even though what you talk about the Asla fund. Yesterday I was actually speaking to uh, a taxi driver and told me, yeah, yeah, I borrowed the eight hundred but I've never paid and I will never pay. Yeah. Because and he said this is our money anyways, they are stealing it. We can see, you know. What is the source of the housing <coughs> fund? Yeah. The, the housing, affordable housing. There is even no formula on how those houses will be redistributed. You are talking about affordable housing, an economy that is actually collapsing if it hasn't collapsed. People without no power of purchase. So this is all a joke. You know, you're, you're, you're frustrating farmers out there uh, with a view to maybe giving this, this affordable housing so that they can release their land to the globalist. I mean, Mwesh, we are talking about an outcome. An outcome ought to be a positive result on how society has changed okay. for better. All right. That hasn't happened. Much. One minute. If you, if, you, if you want to go back to your excuse of give us time, it's okay. We can give you time. You know, okay. because that's, that's your kind of excuse. <laughs> okay, when you let, let, me, let, let, me, let me say this um, uh, to my good friend, Senator Nyutu. I think um, when someone tells you that you're not doing well, it doesn't mean that you'll not do well. Yeah. It's probably telling you, hey, wait a minute. Retrace, mm -hmm. retract, and then approach with a different strategy. And I think when we say these things, it's because we are in touch with the people who elected us from the ground. My people of Nyariba and Masaba constituency have not had their lives improved at all. That I can tell you. Whether it is through agriculture output, whether it is through employment opportunities, Yes, people have been employed, but it is skewed. Mm, yeah. I mean, you saw what KRA did the other day. Two tribes take 60% of their jobs. Then you tell us you're employing people. Yeah, you're employing two tribes. So let us be factual. And let us be real. And remember, this is our country, all of us, you two. You are saying that today, tomorrow you could be president. I know you are pushing for somebody else, but you can also be president tomorrow. <laughs> and you should know how to deal with these factors. Mm, and the more you perpetuate this, the more you isolate yourselves from the rest of the country. Okay. And that is what you are saying. All right. You too. When, when I, I, I think, uh, Trevor, although I know they will say that these are tired arguments, <laughs> uh, but <laughs> when you talk about uh, a failed healthcare system, just so because doctors are on strike, uh, please, we must remember that the CBA that the doctors are talking about was signed in 2017. This is not a creation of Kenya Kwanza administration, and that is a fact. No, no, I mean, Sir Trevor, let, let's be. No, 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 no. Let's agree. Government, government. No, no, let, let's agree. Let's, no, no, they are basic. There's what we call basic. There's what we call. There's what we call basic. But you can't allow misleading where, when it comes, when it comes to factual issues. The point is this factual issues about CBA, government succession, government succession, whatever government has come into. I just want to say this. No, no, no. What I'm simply saying, what I'm saying is this. Let him finish. I just want to put on context that there's what we call state succession. Okay, fine. You cannot start that's, by saying that's that we will not be bound yeah. by what was no, done no, by a previous government. No, that's what he's heading to. Of course, it, I didn't say that. What I said is, there. they are talking about a, a failed health system because doctors are on strike. Yeah. And they are attributing that to Kenya Kwanzaa. Then I'm just pointing out the fact, I'm just, uh, I mean, pointing to them out the fact that VCB was signed in 2017. Yes. And that is a fact. Yeah. So you cannot, I mean, since 2017, yeah. there was a whole term yeah. under the presidency Seven of William of, of, of uh, Uhuru Kenyatta. I mean, and so th 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 that's what and I'm Ruto saying. Ruto. Of course we know, <laughs> uh, of course we know the position that the current president as deputy president, he did not have any power in the, no. in the second term. But let us not get there now. No. So healthcare system, this is something uh, that, of course, there is a problem now. Doctors are on strike. And I, I, I do not uh, uh, sit here to say that uh, the current government should not sort out 
or should not implement what was signed then. What I'm saying is there are some problems that are inherited, and that is a fact. Yeah. And they must be given time. I mean, if it was not sorted out in five years by the previous administration, why do you want it to be sorted out in one and a half years under all these debt management and uh, all these things? Then when uh, they say that um, <coughs> JSS, they, 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 I mean, they talk about uh, the 56,000 teachers. They say that this is not an effort because they are being paid 18,000. Why didn't the previous administration employ those inter those those those, 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 those um, I mean uh, call them interns? Why did, did the government did not make an effort at the previous administration to employ even at least interns, even pay them ten thousand? I mean, this is an effort that has been made, and it is something that uh, these teachers are serving in schools. Of course, yes, uh, maybe their near remuneration needs to be improved uh, with the time, but it is an effort that has been made to sort out the teacher shortage in schools. You cannot say that that is not an achievement. Of course, when you say that uh, JSS uh, uh, has, no, has, has never been resolved, I think it was resolved. It will be domiciled <coughs> in uh, the, 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 the current primary schools, but of course, of, of course uh, we admit that the teacher are not enough, and that is why 56,000 have been employed. So give me this year, yes, so give this year, this year yeah. another 20,000 teachers will be employed. Okay. And I mean, we are sorting out the mess. All right. Give me 10 with, seconds. With, 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 the, with time, okay. uh, Trevor. So we, Food security, okay. nobody here doesn't give live here. Seconds. They live here, All right. and they know the issues that we have had about food, yes. uh, food, food, food security has been about some failed, failed rains okay. for about four consecutive seasons, All right. even seconds. before this Thank government you. came in. Thank Wow. Ten, ten seconds. seconds. Ten seconds. And, and I lost yeah. First time of all, yeah. I'm actually disappointed in Senator Newton yeah. that he does not understand how government operates or succession in government. You cannot come here on national television and, and lie to Kenyans that whatever the previous government did, the current government cannot take over. Government is in perpetuity. Okay. Okay. All right. And secondly, and, I've and second, that. oh, you've not because you, yes, you accepted, but the explanation is excusing okay. it. Secondly, William Ruto, Kimani Ishungo, Kwanza he was a is it the chair of a uh, budget, budget committee for eight years? Ndindi Nyoro okay. and all those people, Kina, uh, Kina, uh, Dwell and rest, yes. they were part and parcel of the Jubilee government. All right. Uru was not a dictatorship. All right. Yeah, that's, that's thank you so much for Uru making time. We have to leave it there. Thank you very much. We've run out of time. Coming up next is Cooking Tips. All right. Bye for now. <laughs>